Listening test instructions. The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Hey, you look concerned. What's on your mind? The final exam. I'm not fully prepared yet. Well, don't worry too much. You still have three days. Yeah, but three days will fly past in a wink. Well, you still have time to cram things in your brain anyway. Question 1. Why is the man looked worried? You will hear a conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Good afternoon. I'm flying to San Francisco. How many people are traveling? Do you have your tickets and passport? It's my son and I. Here's my ticket and our passports. Would you like a window or an aisle seat? I would be very happy if we can get an aisle seat. Sure. Are you checking in any bags? Yes. This suitcase and my backpack. Let's put them on the scale, one at a time, please. Sure. And by the way, I have a layover in London. Do I have to pick up my luggage there? No, you will pick them up in San Francisco. Here is your boarding pass. You are all set. Thank you for your help. Have a good day. Which transport medium will the passengers use? Where would the woman pick her luggage from? You will hear the second section of the conversation shortly. Hello, sir. How are you here? Actually, I am also flying to San Francisco. Do you have any work there, sir? Yes, I have some airline-related work. Oh, that's great, sir. How's your son? Isn't he getting bored? Not really, sir. He gets bored if I don't make him busy. Yeah, that's true. How do you feel to be a part of this airline? Well, it's been five years, and I must say it has been a fruitful association. They are thorough professionals. In fact, I joined here as a cabin crew. Oh, that's nice. Even I dreamt of becoming a pilot, but it wasn't my destiny. Yeah, pilot's job is really a tough one. Yeah, it is. Now my son is so fascinated by the airline staff that he wants to be one. But I never dreamt of such a thing, haha. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. I have to go. My son's getting bored now. Sure. Goodbye. Nice meeting you. How did the passengers meet the woman again?
Which of the following statements is true? Where did the passengers aspire from? You will hear the third section of the conversation shortly. You're back. So how was your journey to London? It was quite good. What about you? Did your son sleep well? Lucky you. We had a horrible time. An old lady in front of my seat was snoring so badly. Oh, she might be tired enough. Whatever. But my son got irritated and woke her up. But that isn't a good way to deal with the strangers. I know, but he is still an infant and he was getting so annoyed. Oh, sorry. I forgot. Thank God she got down at London. Otherwise, I would have to request the staff to change my seat. All's well that ends well. Okay. See you in San Francisco then. Take care. Why was the agent surprised to see the passenger? What did the man not appreciate about the baby? What will the women do if her co-passengers snorted again? You will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Good evening. Good evening. Where are you going? I am going to the doctor. In what connection? I don't feel well these days. What's the matter? I always get a headache. I never feel fresh. Do you take exercise? No, I don't find time. You know I am busy in my studies. I study all the time. That's why you don't feel well. What do you mean? I mean, a person who studies all the day and does not take exercise, would he not fall ill? Why don't you tell me clearly? Listen, exercise is very important for health. When exams are near, Students study all the day sitting at one place. Their food does not get digested properly. They fall ill. You may be right. Not maybe, but definitely. You do not know the importance of exercise. What should I do then? Take exercise regularly, either in the morning or in the evening. But in the morning it is better. You will feel fresh the whole day and you will get well without a doctor in no time. From tomorrow morning, I'll start taking exercise. 
That is a good thing. Goodbye. Goodbye. Where is the man going? What is the matter with the man? Why is the man having headache? When should the man exercise? What is the relation between the two speakers? You will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hi, Brendan. You look great. Have you been working out? Thanks, Alice. Yes, I needed to get in shape. You have always been a fitness enthusiast. Good for you. Can you suggest me a good way to work out? Well, always remember to warm up before exercising and cool down after ex exercising. That's the golden rule of fitness, and a majority of the people don't follow this. Okay. Are cardio exercises like running good for a warm up? Yes, but you do not want to increase your heart rate too fast, so maybe you should start out slow. You can go for a normal walk or a light jog. Got it. Any suggestions for abs? Try to do different things. Do sit ups, pull ups, push ups, and squats. A little bit of everything. Thanks. Hopefully, I'll get in shape soon. No problem. And be careful with the amount of exercises to be done every day. Don't overexhaust your body, else, it will have an adverse effect. Like what? Your body will feel tired always. Sometimes it may even cause a muscle pull. Also, Keep a check on your diet too. Is diet also an important parameter in maintaining the body shape? Of course it is. If you do not eat pro properly, it will harm your body. Why? What will happen then? You are what you eat. One should eat a balanced diet. You need to avoid sugar, fizzy drinks, and junk food, and incorporate more fruits and vegetables in your diet. I never knew about this. That's something to be looked on carefully. Yes. Hope you take my suggestion carefully and in the right way. Sure. Thanks again. Why did Brandon went to work out?
What did Brandon suggest Alice first do before workout? How can the women bleed her ads? What is the women eventually hoping? What would happen if the woman performs high intensity workout? You will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop down menu. Operation Ice Bridge, NASA's longest running aerial survey of polar ice, flew over the northern Antarctic Peninsula on October 16, 2018. During the survey, designed to assess changes in the ice height of several glaciers draining into the Larsen A, B, and C embayment, IceBridge senior support scientist Jeremy Harbeck spotted a very sharp-angled tabular iceberg floating among sea ice just off of the Larsen C ice shelf. A photo of the iceberg was widely shared after it was posted on social media. I thought it was pretty interesting. I often see icebergs with relatively straight edges but I've not really seen one before with two corners at such right angles like this one had, Harbeck said. The rectangular iceberg appeared to be freshly calved from Larsen C, which in July 2017 released the massive A68 iceberg, a chunk of ice about the size of the state of Delaware. In a different photo, Harbeck captured both the edges of the now famous iceberg and a slightly less rectangular iceberg. That image also captures A68 in the distance. I was actually more interested in capturing the A68 iceberg that we were about to fly over, but I thought this rectangular iceberg was visually interesting and fairly photogenic, so on a lark I just took a couple of photos, Harbeck said. The flight originated from Punta Arenas, Chile, as part of a five-week-long ice bridge deployment which began on October 10th and is scheduled to conclude on November 18th.
you will listen to a two minutes video, then eight questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. Lives than the younger generation. Great. Yep, 67% of adults 60 and older say they're satisfied or very satisfied. The 18 to 39 year olds, 61% uh, of that age group reported being satisfied or very satisfied. Surprised by that? You know, for me, I'm not surprised by that because I think about, you know, it, the younger generation, they're afraid of getting old. You look at it with such a negative connotation, you know, your body starts failing and you don't have your health and you, you don't have your looks. Um, I can't, I can't wait for the golden years, personally. <laughs> I have parents who are in that retirement age and I just see that they've just got this sense of security and calmness about them and they just also bought a retirement home in Naples. That sounds kind of nice. So yeah, that's not bad. I don't see what's wrong with getting I old. I think it's the fear of the unknown because you don't know what's going to happen when you're, you know, in your 20s and your 30s and you're thinking about 60 years old. You're still trying to figure things out. You're still mm. trying to get that job and have yeah. that security blanket lined up. And I think if there were someone who could come down and say like, when you're 60, like it's going to be fine. Yeah. You're going to have yeah. that house in Naples. We'd all feel a lot better. Yeah, that's true. I don't think there's there's anything wrong with when you're younger having a little fear of getting older though mm -hmm. I mean it's scary it is scary you know where you're at when you're younger you know your physical ability you know that you're unlikely to have kind of chronic illness or things like that that tend to come with older mm -hmm. age and so it's total I think it's totally understandable that when you're under 40 you think getting older is not going to be awesome. Well, what's interesting to me is that they do. Unless you're Kim and you can't <laughs> wait to be 60. You have a long way to wait. I do. You I have know, a long I way know. to wait. Oh, gosh. If only I could oh, have that 401k. Gosh. Can't wait <laughs> to be 70. <laughs> no. Oh, it's going to be amazing. I do think it's interesting, though, how this study looked at how older people are treated by different industries. And there is a lot of negative treatment coming from, say, the fashion industry mm -hmm. or other, you know, services and products, too, where uh, it's almost like once you reach a certain age you're kind of forgotten about and yeah. just kind of brushed yeah. out to the well, side sure. that would be, that would be kind of a hard adjustment to feel that way to feel like you don't see anyone you know when to feel that you don't like matter you in a way. It, what they said in the poll it wasn't a customer service issue necessarily but it was a product development issue that uh, people 60 plus uh, and even the younger people polled said you know fashion technology to a lesser degree sports and entertainment mm -hmm. are not creating products mm -hmm. or serving the older generation which is kind of dumb when you think that 60 plus that age group accounts mm -hmm. for seven trillion dollars of spending well and all the money. baby boomers right yeah. now yeah. they have more money than me yeah, tell you what that's for sure yeah <laughs>
you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. A breakthrough deal to attempt to limit global temperature rises was agreed at a conference of world nations in December 2015. It aimed to investigate how and why the Earth's temperature is changing. The average temperature of the Earth's surface has increased from about 0.85 degrees Celsius, 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit, in the last 100 years. Up until 2015, 13 of the 14 warmest years had been recorded in the 21st century. 2015 then became the hottest year on record, but was surpassed by record-breaking 2016. Scientists believe that gases released from industry and agriculture, known as emissions, are adding to the natural greenhouse effect, the way the Earth's atmosphere traps some of the energy from the sun. Human activities such as burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas are increasing the amount of carbon dioxide, CO2, the main greenhouse gas responsible for global warming. Carbon-absorbing forests are also being cut down. The concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is now higher than at any time in the last 800,000 years and reached a record high in May 2015. But 2016 marked five consecutive years of CO2 increases of at least two parts per million. Higher temperatures, extreme weather events, and higher sea levels are all linked to a warming climate and could have a drastic effect on the world's regions. Since 1900, sea levels have risen on an average of about 19 centimeters globally. The rate of sea level rise has accelerated in recent decades, placing a number of islands and low-lying countries at risk. risk. The retreat of polar ice sheets is an important contributor to this rise. Arctic sea ice is also shrinking because of higher temperatures, though it makes little contribution to raised sea levels. An area of sea ice roughly 10 times the size of the UK has been lost when the current day is compared with average levels from the early 1980s. The scale of potential impacts is uncertain. The changes could drive shortages in fresh water, bring about major changes in food production conditions, and cause a rise in the number of casualties from floods, storms, heat waves, and droughts. This is because climate change is expected to increase the frequency of extreme weather events. However, linking any single event to global warming is complicated.